Johnny Fluffbots, it's me, Follow Wild Roaring Cortez Cult, and today I am starting something very different. Recently, I've been looking at the past of my channel many years ago. All I created was Q&As and playthroughs of a certain furry video game called Amorous. But eventually, one video had to be deleted because of... You know what? So I kind of want to bring back that saga in, in some way or another. I scoured the internet for any kind of game that I could potentially make into a new series if I'm interested enough. I found this video game called Changeling Tale. Apparently this game is supposed to be very good and it's like a visual novel like the one I played many years ago. But this one has a better story, better characters and just a more diverse world building. And you guys are going to be tuning in along with me. So let's get started. And here we have it. Oh, so this is the menu, hey? Changeling tail, there we go. And it already features three quite gorgeous girls there. I don't know who I would prefer, but I guess we shall have to find out. So let's begin things. All right, so are we setting up the scene? Oh, oh where are we? It's like we're in a war field kind of situation. Maybe this is like set in the past. A chill wind brushes my skin as I huddle against the trench wall. Oh, so maybe this is like during one of the world wars. Interesting. It's a sure sign that winter will soon be on us. I pull my legs in closer to brace myself against the cold and my boots squelch loudly as they drag through the mud. Oh, what's that? Oh, it's a shooting star. A star flare arcs lazily through the sky. My thoughts drift to that first winter when I disembarked in France. Oh, so maybe this is World War One, I, I believe. Wondering if the war would be over before I even made it back to the front. Hardly. The heart of that enthusiastic boy may have died four years ago, but I live on four years of living a nightmare. I can imagine how that must have felt for the veterans back in the past, because enduring all of this torture every single day and hardly making any progress, history, it repeats itself. In many ways, tonight is no different. The distant thuds of shellfire, the occasional crack of a rifle shot piercing the air, the devil's lullaby. That's not one lullaby I want to listen to. But the fire is sporadic and rote as dawn approaches. There is to be a ceasefire today, or so we are told. So relatable to today's events. Oh, come on. Why did I have to choose a game with this kind of scenario? Rumors are circulating that it will go into effect across the whole front. Could the nightmare finally be coming to an end? I tell myself I should feel joy, relief, hope, something. But those feelings elude me. The other lads are silent as well. Silence and emptiness. Is that all the future holds? I hope not, because the world should be bright at that point. No answers are carried on the whistling wind. My hand fumbles inside my soaked overcoat and produces a letter. I've read it several times, and I read it again. Oh, so are we reading a letter? Nice! Look at that handwriting! Very cursive. Dearest Malcolm. Oh, so is that my name? Is that the protagonist's name? Malcolm. It is with a heavy heart that I write to you. Just yesterday, we received word that your beloved grandfather has passed on. Oh, no. Oh, oh, rest in peace, Grandpa. Your beloved grandfather has passed on to the hands of our Heavenly Father. There he may finally rest in peace. Your grandmother assures us that she will be fine, but we know that whilst life on the farm is quiet, it is also full of duty. We fear she will be unable to make ends meet with our assistance, particularly in these troubled times. I can imagine so with all the war going on. She does not wish to be a burden, but Malcolm, please consider returning home to live in the country with your grandmother once your tour is completed. They're calling the war a tour, like a tour in the trenches, like another happy day down in the tour. She would love you to the moon and back for it. Your mother and I think oftenly of you. Be safe, your proud father ever, Bruce. Aw, oh, that's so sweet, writing to their son. Kurt, as always. While the other boys get parcels from their families, I only receive the odd letter here or there. Aw, so he doesn't really get as much of a present as the other boys. Oh, come on. What is with Malcolm being so unloved here? Posting packages, taxes, and already stretched budget, Mum and Pa said once they moved to the city. Mm, so they gave up the country life to go to the city. Interesting. I like this. 
getting out of Achnakrish. I hope I said that right. And away from their small world was all I ever wanted. Things seemed so much clearer then, when the war was fresh. Now with a glimmer of the end in sight, the future is as muddy as this damned trench we call a home. I try to imagine myself with discharge papers in hand, sailing back across the channel. Where am I headed? To the city, to V for a factory job with all the other returning soldiers? To school, to whittle my days away behind books I can't afford? Or after everything, am I really destined to spend my days back on the old family farm? Well, if it was me, I would go back to the old family farm just to like reminisce in myself with everybody before potentially moving on to something else. That's like the circle of life. I am no clairvoyant. There is no vision of the future, only a view of the same pock-marketed parapet I've stared at for months. Resignation sets in. Really, what difference does it make? What's left to lose? Oh! Oh my god! Oh my god, was that like a mortar? My heart skips a beat. Dirt patters onto my helmet as if to rattle me out of my thoughts. And I curse myself for considering a future I may not yet live to see. God, I, I hope Malcolm survives. My grip tightens on my rifle and I hunker down, counting the precious minutes until I can set the weapon aside for good. God, this, this is kind of horrifying. Hey, dawn has arrived. I can finally see the sun. Oh, we'll listen to this music. Once I knew he was returning home, I was flooded with relief. This must be someone else talking. My life could begin again. Malcolm was safe. That was all that mattered. He was alive. I could only hope he was unharmed and that no further damage would ever come to him. Oh. Boy, this is really engaging. I am more for this game. Changeling Tale. All right, let's properly get into this. I presume that that was like the prologue. Chapter one, Homecoming. So we have started the first chapter, eh? Oh, is this home? Oh my God, the, the soundtrack is dazzling me. It's, it's like filling my ears with candy. Almost home, Hazel. I lean forward and pat my new companion as we trot along the ridge towards the village. It's been quite a long ride from Strathcarran, where I picked her up at auction. At auction? Did we, like, buy an animal or a vehicle? Oh, it's a mare! Oh, yes! Oh, what perfection this is! The mare offers a disapproving snort, as if to say, this is clearly not her home. Home, I weigh the word in my mind. Is it truly my home anymore? I trod up and down this road almost all my life, but that's what feels like ages ago. All around us, the foothills roll musically, like lines in a songbook. I would like to think I could still play a few notes on the flute my father whittled for me out of pine when I was still a wee lad. Wee lad? Is, is Malcolm Scottish? I guess I have to give him a, a Scottish accent whenever his dialogue appears on screen. The memories are flooding back, alright? But they feel disconnected, as if they are from someone else's life, like sitting in the audience at a moving picture. Still, I can't help but feel emotional from the familiar scenery. The bluebells and heather are in full bloom, though it is May and still the season of cold spells. It surely must be spring. It's almost enough to quell the memories of the desolate landscape I left behind. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this kind of scenery would be way better than a sunken trench. A fresh start and a clean slate. Maybe this can be home once again. Yeah, I'm very excited. Oh, so this is the village. Oh, I'm loving how rural it looks, like old-fashioned, antique. There's even a building called Stag and Nanny, Inn and Free House. Oh, I guess that could be my house. The sky is getting dark as we finally make our way into Aknakresh. The humble cluster of aging dwellings beckons us in, a cozy oasis in the raw landscape of the highlands. As we navigate the well-trodden path, I realize that something feels off. The tiny village was never much for hustle and bustle outside of market day, but apart from the crunch of gravel under Hazel's hoofs, the whole place is eerily silent and still. I shake my head. The wars touched here too then. How many men would never return? Oh boy, that- Ah, uh, black cat alert! You know what they say about black cats, never let it cross your path. 
A black cat emerges from an alley and peers at us as if to punctuate the gloom. I really love the vocabulary that this story is losing. It's very descriptive and that's my kind of style for writing too. Gran used to say black cats were drawn by freshly departed souls. And I can't help but shiver. Hazel seems a little spooked too. But once we've trotted past, she relaxes back into a stroll. Yeah, go away, black cat. Even though I love my black cat that I have as a pet. <laughs> We round a bend, and finally hear signs of life from the building ahead. It's inside the inn. Let's go in and have a drink, maybe. The stag and nanny, of course, defiantly merry, even in the toughest of times. My stomach rumbles, reminding me that I've not eaten since the single biscuit at the train stop this morning. He had a single biscuit. Wow, you must be famished, my dude. Jeez. A pint and a hearty stew would surely fill every craving inside me right now. The music and laughter are inviting. A short detour won't do any harm, will it? After all, it's been months since the letter. Surely Gran can wait a few more hours. Yeah, I'm very certain she can. I slide off Hazel and loop her reins tightly around the post. Oh, is that Hazel? Oh, look at her. She's so beautiful. She's even got like a wacky human-like mane. What's going on there? She's even got like a little horse key ring there. Oh, that's so cute. Tightly, because I quickly learned that she's a sour girl, almost petty in her erratic behavior, and apparently why I received her at such a fair bid. She glares at me disapprovingly. I can tell by the state of her eyes right there. Buck up! I'll be treating you well enough. It's just a quick stop, love. I'll be out in a jiff and sober too. She huffs skeptically. Yeah, there's no way that you're gonna go into a bar and not get drunk. Like, come on, Malcolm. Don't you have any manners? Well, probably. Mostly. <laughs> Hazel does not approve anyway. As I open the door, the clouds of smoke part, revealing a comfortable scene. God, how I've missed it. Like, look at the state of this bar. Very fancy. It's a regular Wednesday night at the Stag and Nanny. The noise of tired, happy drunkards is music to my ears. Indeed, the barkeep is one of the loudest mingling amongst his chums at the table. Before I know it, a little sprite of a woman approaches me. Wispy tufts of brown hair peek out from under a large floppy hat. She smiles shyly at me and reaches out towards my arm. Hey, beautiful! Oh, so this is the woman. Oh, look at her! Oh, I love that. I love the hat as well. And the checkered green scarf as well. Oh, that's so cool! Welcome home, soldier! Oh, oh why thank you. She blushes, and her voice becomes quiet and drowned out by the commotion. I, uh, I can say so, because there's so many lads in here. So, um, how does it feel to be- She's literally resonating Fluttershy vibes. I'm Fluttershy. My name is Fluttershy. Did I quite catch that? I'm sorry. She blushes even harder and takes a deep breath. Up, oh, off she goes. Yeah, that's typical Fluttershy behavior. But before she can finish her thought, I am grabbed by the barkeep. His handshake is firm and benevolent. Here we go. Another one home. Good to see you, lad. And this man's called Balgare. Oh, nice to meet you, Balgare. And you, a sight for sore eyes, looking sharp as ever. Is he sitting down? Balgare pulls me in and gives me a hearty slap on the back. How would that feel to you? Like... Oh, God, that must have been painful. I, I think I just harmed myself there. We're all right proud of you, my boy. It's good to have you back. It's a relief to be here. I mean it. All my worries have wafted away, mingling into the room's smoke-filled haze. Balguer steps back and studies me from head to toe. It feels like an officer's inspection, and instinctively, my body snaps to attention. He nods. You were but a wee lad when I served you your first brew. Let me pour you another, a beer for a man. As Balgair heads to the bar, others gather around to congratulate and welcome me back. Oh, that's so appreciative of the whole village. At least everyone's like closely knitted together. That's the kind of community that I love. It dawns on me I am still in uniform, identifiable as a homecomer, a survivor. I spot similar welcomings throughout the bar and wonder who I might remember. I haven't seen any of my friends since before the war. They separated most of the recruits from town into class regiments and scattered us leagues apart. Oh, that's so heartbreaking though, because you don't really get to see any of your friends like when you come back from the war and you don't even know if they survived too. Oh, I, I feel kind of bad for Malcolm, but at least he's in a welcoming home now. 
There are a few recognisable faces, older gentlemen I know by looks, not by name, but most of the pub goers are an elderly sort. Absent are the lads my age with whom I'd raise a ruckus. I tell myself they are still overseas waiting for their ticket home. Best not to dwell on the alternative. Come to think of it, I didn't recognise the brown haired girl from town either. Wait, had she left already? Wow, she literally did a flood of shy and just ditched. My stomach rumbles again, reminding me why I came. Why, why haven't you just ordered a snack or something? Get a few peanuts! I negotiate through the gauntlet of handshakes and backpats to an empty seat at my table. Before I know it, Bulgare places a pint in front of me. A delectably flaky bridey appears soon after by a gentleman doffing his cap with his compliments. I could get used to this kind of treatment. Yeah, I want that every day too. Ravenous, I quickly down the pastry and the beverage. The heavy flavours cling in my throat, deliciously comforting. It's good to be back. Ah, people around me are yammering about politics and work, weather and loved ones. Then I spot a glimmer of red in the crowd, and all at once, the din hushes. Oh. Oh, what's happening? The gas lights become dim, and the crowd collectively turns to the back. A pixie of a girl steps into the light. Oh, look at the style of that lady. Oh, a flapper. A, a flapper. Yeah, it was a flapper. Oh my god, I'm so right. I can't believe my eyes. A flapper. Here, in this backwater? The village has certainly changed if it's attracting this sort of girl. I can tell from the crowd's expressions that there are mixed feelings about that too. Oh, she sets down her cigarette. From another corner, I hear the crackle of a record being placed on a Victoria. Oh, I can hear it too! Tinny notes fill the pub. They remind me of songs I would heard coming from the American camp while we were all waiting for our boats home. There's a pause in the rhythm and she begins her act. As she would begin dancing on stage. Wow, she is sparkling in the spotlight, can you see? Her crystal voice and swaying dress break open the room. It's a song about dancing in the dunes, out in the Orient, under a crescent moon. And it's like nothing I've seen or heard before. Oh dear, we've got our first choice here. So I presume that this is where we choose our like paths that we want to go on this story. So it's either enchanting or what is this noise? I'd say it's enchanting because we're back home and we just want to like immerse ourselves in this woman. Yeah, I miss this kind of treatment. Her red lips shine as she smirks and chirps her way through the tune, toying with the audience. She's a flirt and a stunning one at that. Yeah, I can agree with that wholesomely. I beckon Bulgare over. Another point, lad? Aye, and something extra. Send the flapper a whiskey gurinade. Extra cherries on me! What, do you really want to instantly get hooked, Malcolm? You just saw this woman for like half a second and you instantly, yeah, send the flapper over with a wine or two. He laughs as he collects some empties. Enjoying the new entertainment, eh? Aye, she's been a hit with a lot of the regulars. Let's sew with the stogy ones. One whiskey gurinade coming up. Mind, we have not had a batch of cherries come in since the damned U-boats moved in off the Hebrides, but I'll see what I can do for you and the fine lady. With a laugh, he spins away, and I find myself lost again in the flapper's exotic twirls. What a sight she is, especially from the back. Like, wow. Oh no, it's ending! Oh no, give me some more of the music. Eventually, the performance comes to an end. One last picorette, a tease of a curtsy, and the crowd bursts into hollows and applause. As she prepares the next dance, a few older fans press closer to this unusual creature. I can see the flapper's face fall all the way from here. Oh yeah, she looks a bit sad. What, why is that? She probably performed like something very delightful on stage and she's feeling down about that? Oh, let's give her a hug, Fluffbutts. Balgare, what are you doing on stage? Is he gonna dance for us as well? Fortunately, Balgare pushes his way through, handing off the cocktail and whispering into her ear. She lights up, taking the drink, and starts sipping gingerly. Before I know it, she spied me and is walking my way. She's coming over to me! Oh god, alright, I need to be respectful. Okay, here she comes, there she is! Do you like my hair, soldier? 
I just bobbed it. She touches the bottom of her short hairstyle. I don't know what or who a bob is, so I agree since her hair looks lovely. Her dress as well, very elegant, and even the choker around her, I can see a ruby as well. And the fact that there's a flower with a lily sort of attached on her strap, is she trying to get onto me? I do, it's quite fetching. Fetching? You're a love, aren't ya? Suppose so. Say... Hey... You first. Go ahead, ladies first. Thanks for the drink. You're welcome. Care to join me? Oh, yep, she's sitting down next to me. Ah, uh, girls, too close to me. Ah! I tap the seat next to mine. The flapper slides in next to me and downs the drink in two long, slow sips. She licks her lips. Thirsty, eh? You have time for another? Would love to, but Alvin Man Balger doesn't give me much time for a break. Oh, come on, Balguer, give this flapper some time off to herself. She deserves it. She winks at the barkeep, who nods knowingly. I'm back on stage. Well, that was a momentary embrace, thank you. The flapper bounces off to the floor as the Victorola starts up another tune. She sings, spins, and shimmies with her red bob bobbing. I finish up the second pint and decide against the third, as the memory of my promise to Hazel is already getting fuzzy. I work my way to the bar to settle my tab, but Balguer refuses payment. I earned it, he says. Giving him my heartfelt thanks, I head towards the door, turning to give the dancing girl one last smile and nod. She calls out to me over the music. Glad you're home, soldier! See you soon? I hope so. <laughs> what is this girl trying to do to me? She's like a succubus, she's trying to draw me in. I wave goodbye, smitten with the old pub and its new inhabitants. Oh, I really enjoyed my time there. That was very entertaining, I'll say. Oh, who is this? Is that my gran? And is this my home? Mm, I guess I can appreciate it for what it is, but if that, like, shed was, like, a bit bigger, I can, like, probably live in that. Night has fallen as Hazel and I approach the old homestead. I feel a pinch of guilt at this late hour as I see a small silhouette framed against the open door. Gran is outside on the front steps, sweeping at almost nothing, yet dust still gathers about. She looks up at me and waves. I return the gesture, thankful my journey is over at long last. Hey, Granny Gran, how are you doing? I'm sorry to have kept you waiting. Closer now, I can see she looks as tired as I feel, but there are tears of joy in her eyes. Oh, don't be sorry, Malcolm. It's enough that you're here. I never knew I would see you again. And Hazel has to, of course, ruin the moment. I dismount Hazel, who graciously allowed me to ride her back from town without bother. She nearly shakes free off my grasp. Granny helps rein in the mare and secure her to the house post. A feisty one, isn't she? Oh, dearie, are these really all your things? She weighs the small rucksack that had been slung across Hazel's back. Aye, they patted me on the back and sent me on my way without much more than clothes on my back. But they're sharp clothes, are they not? I pat off the dust, straighten my collar, and strike a goofy salute. My grandmother laughs. How are you, Gran? Dear Agnes responds with a loving embrace, much stronger than I imagined she could muster. Her limbs are so frail, but all muscle and sinew. There is so little left here to have you back as a miracle all to itself. I stroke her head, her silken white hair, as she weeps softly. It's my pleasure. We hold each other for a little while longer, sharing in the profound feelings of relief and reunion. Then she ushers me inside. Yeah, goodbye, Hazel. You're not coming in with me. Come, come in before you catch cold. Oh, this is very cozy. I love this setting. Oh, the dark lighting of the whole house. Kind of gloomy, but really welcoming. My senses are overwhelmed by the sights, smells, and sounds of my childhood. A crackling fire, a bubbling pot of stew on the stove, the simple decor of country living. Sure, a few stones have come loose and holes are forming between the rafters, so I can see my future plans already. But by and large, nothing's changed, except how empty the nest has become. Gran, I'm so sorry about Grandad. How have you been managing? She turns from the stove and waggles a ladle at me. We'll have none of that tonight, young man. A weary traveler should not dwell on what's behind us. Well, I mean, you don't want to disturb the grandma. Do not dwell on the past. Make time for the future and the present. 
Despite the nosh at the pub, I welcome the bowl of stew grand places in front of me. It tastes even better than I remembered. She pours me a whiskey to down it all, and every part of me is warmed through. Tonight you will sleep well, in a warm bed, every night now for as long as you want. She laughs. <laughs> Even if that be after I leave this earth. Oh, don't put that idea into my head, game. Is Agnes gonna die sometime in the story? Oh, that would be an emotional moment if she does. Gran, what a thing to say! Ah, but it's a true thing. Something I realized after your mum and dad moved to the city and your grandfather passed away. This life we have is finite. I cherish all of it now, as you must as well. It's as if she's been feeling around for my soul and knew where to look for it. She hit the right spot on the first try. Yes, I know all too well. I take her hand in mine, both of us tipsy from food, drink and good company. Let's have this moment. This moment here. Ah, oh, just like embracing Grandma together, missing her since the war. Oh, this is kind of beautiful. Grandmother pulls me close again and holds me the way Mum used to. I don't know if I could ever bear leaving this table. We laugh, we cry, and we stay up late into the night. Gosh, Malcolm, you really need to get your rest. I know you've been missing Granny, but yeah, you need to get your exhaustion under control. Oh, some new music. What is this? Is this like a, uh, a day-night cycle thing? Yeah, it is! Oh, that looks very enchanting, especially with the design of the sun and moon. Oh, I hear, I hear a kettle. Oh, it's going to explode! I wake up to the sound of a kettle coming to a boil. The sun has yet to fully rise, but I can smell the tea brewing and something fresh baked. It's a challenge getting myself up out of bed. The goose down quilt, even with its bare threads, is so warm and comfortable. I have not slept so well since, well, the last time I slept here. This was my room growing up. It's hardly recognizable now. My old things have been long since been stowed who knows where. It's mostly empty, save for some odds and ends. I finally will myself out from under the covers, throw on some proper clothes and head into the common room. Oh, more soundtrack. Oh, I really love the sound of this one. Oh, that's really striking a, that, oh, that's striking a chord with me. Those soft piano tones and the, all the acoustics as well. The soundtrack is already the best thing about this game. Good morning, young man. I have biscuits on the hearth and potted eggs on the table. Fresh cream in the pitcher, sugar cubes in the jar. Thank you so much, Gran. I give her a good morning embrace, and she squeezes me tightly again. An impressive and gentle vice grip. When she steps back, she is suddenly all business. Now, I've already fed Hazel her breakfast. Once the dishes are done, I'll go tend the herd and clean the stable. Gran, why don't you let me take care of all of that? You don't need to run the farm all by yourself anymore. She sighs and shows her stubborn streak. It's not in me to ask for help. Times are hard and everyone has enough to worry about already. I don't want to burden anyone. Not even you. If this farm becomes too much for us to handle, it's always an option to give it up. No, do not give up your farm. It's probably, you don't want to like sell it for collateral. To sell and join your mother and father in the city. Who wants to live in a boring, yucky city when you're out in the free countryside? Nonsense, this is your home. We'll make it work. So how about it? Sergeant Malcolm Campbell reporting for duty. So Campbell is a surname, so Malcolm Campbell. Ooh, that is a very cool name. I really love it. Well then, soldier, I... Well, I suppose we could use some things for this week. Perhaps you might go to the market for me today. It's a start. I wink and nod towards my breakfast. I better eat fast then if I'm to beat the crowds. I chew and guzzle until the empty plate rattles, and the cup and pot have not one drop left. I must have been so famished during the war, and especially waking up for breakfast. Well, I've probably had enough to eat now. You're an angel, Malcolm. Laughing, I stand up, shoulder an old overcoat of Grandad's, and give Gran a peck on the forehead. Mwah! And don't you forget it. I'll be back soon, Gran. Oh, that's so generous of Malcolm to give Granny his a helping hoof. Why am I saying helping hoof? I should be saying helping hand. We're playing a human game here, not a pony one. I set off across the meadow to the stable. 
My boots lose their footing a few times in the wet mud. The mist is still settling in the air. This looks really purple and pink for a sunrise, don't you think? Outside, the sun is cresting the hills across the lock. It is edged with pink, and I find myself muttering the ancient rhyme. Red sky at night, shepherd's delight. Red sky in the morning, shepherd's warning. What does this mean? A warning? Passing the herd, I can hear cuds chomping and droopy lips braying. Gran told me we hold three dozen head of cattle, but from here, I can only count 20 or so. Is her count off, or was it just a wee bit of reassurance through exaggeration? Well, it's probably exaggeration. Opening the stable door is harder than I remember. I steal myself and try to get a grip on the damp wood. Hey, Hazel is in the stable. Oh, look at you, girl. You're glimmering in the sunlight there, girl. Look at her. As the doors slide open, I see Hazel standing impatiently in her stall. I'm reminded of the difficulty Gran and I had stabling her before we retired last night. Was she just a grumpy bitch? No, I do not want to get in this stable. Morning, my grumpy friend. How was your first night's stay at the Chateau at Campbell? Is that what they're calling the bar now? <laughs> she snorts. Poor Hazel. Now in the light, I can see the drafty old stable is in much worse shape than the homestead. Sunlight beams through the countless holes in the rafters, patching the barn's roof. Yet another chore to prioritize. Uh, no final accommodations for miles, haha. <laughs> Don't you worry, we'll take care of this place together. It'll be ship shape soon enough. Her head rolls dramatically as she flicks the mane off her eyes. She apparently isn't amused, but I can't help but laugh. Yeah, she's so grumpy, like, come on, girl, enlighten up. You've got yourself a new owner, you've got yourself a new stable, if not in the best condition, and you've got a whole new place to explore. Like, maybe Malcolm should just let the leash off of her and let, like, let her run around? Oh, come on now, it's not that bad. Come on, let's get you hitched to the cart. It's market day today, and we've got a lot to pick up. Nasal nudges my chin with her velvety muzzle. Ah, I nestle into it, and my hands and arms reach instinctively to her cold head. I hold my creature, listen to her nicker into my chest, watch bellows of her breath float in the frigid air, and smell the damped hay in the stable. <laughs> Oh, come on. She can't even appreciate, like, a loving... Oh, my God. Hazel is really getting on my nerves here. Then her head buckles back in a plucky toss, nearly knocking me to the ground. So that's how it's going to be, eh, Miss Hazel? So be it. A strong woman has never bothered me. Oh, what's this? Resolve to train her or get her treats at the market. Well, she's already kind of in a bad mood, so we wouldn't really want to train her. Maybe she's already trained enough. Let's get her some treats at the market because then at least she'll put on a smile, I hope. I remember the drill manual I was issued and its section on horse discipline. It worked well enough for all the good it did us once when we were dismounted and dug in. Those who act with inhumanity, they obey reluctantly. Those who treat them well are always repaid by obedience and ready action. Yeah, that's exactly what I was saying. Like, obedience, maybe she'll get a smile if we give her a treat or two. All right, let's keep this going. All right, I get it. You still don't trust me. I tell you what, if you behave, maybe we can find you a special treat at the market. How does that sound? Oh, look at that, I can see the ears flopping. Hazel eyes me skeptically, but noticeably calms as I carefully fashion her saddle. Yeah, come on, Hazel, I'm being gentle with you. Let's give her a good treat. And a girl, that's more like it. Now, time to get on the road. So I presume that we're going to be going down to the market now. Hazel is not too thrilled about towing the small cart, but she only bucks a few times on the ride into town, so I consider it a success. Hell yes! Ooh, is this the market? It looks like a festival is going on here. Hey, we've got that tune coming back. The square is already bustling with activity when we arrive. It's the only market this side of the lock. People have flocked from all corners of the Vale to stock up on supplies. The morning air is full of sounds of animal carts. Women quibbling over prices are typical. Children fighting or screaming with delight. And old men drunk on early beers and life. Really? This time in the morning? Well, I guess if this is set in Scotland, then whoopie-doo. I tie my mare to a post and dive into the fray. 
My first stop is the millinery booth, and since I realise I don't have a proper hat to wear out in public or in the fields, glazing down at the milliner's wares, it suddenly dawns on me who is standing behind the cart. Oh, is it that um, shy girl? Yeah, I knew it by the state of her hat in the silhouette. Oh, hello again, Fluttershy. <laughs> I'm sorry I had to make that joke. Hi there. What a pleasant surprise to see you again. She fidgets with the hat a bit, borrows her hands into her coat pockets and blushes. You are as well. Uh, are you looking to buy a hat? Yeah, I was looking to get something sharp. Do you have any recommendations? Well, the flat caps seem to be popular. Comfortable? I would say so. What about the one you've got? Oh, this was... custom made. You sure? Well, she does have a bow around it, so it does give off the indication that it is custom made. It does fit you quite well. Her blush deepens even further. Thanks. You know, you'd look good in the green one, I think. It matches your eyes. That green one right there, like the beret one. Oh, I would definitely suit that. You're already on point with me with the fitting green. Then that is the one for me. Hell yes, we took it! Alright, I bet I'm gonna look so snazzy in that hat. I try on the green wool cap, placing it right atop my head. It's a wonderful fit. I have to agree, it's very comfortable. I hope it looks as good as it feels. That it does. I start fumbling around for some pocket change, and a few coins spill loose on the ground. It takes an effort to bend down and scoop them up. My back protests from yesterday's long ride. You know, I don't think I've had a chance to properly introduce myself. My name's Malcolm. Oh, wait, this isn't the girl. And my name's Madoc. That's a right fine cap you picked out there. Yours for just five shillings. Who is this? Oh my god, who is this guy? He looks a bit like Valguer from the bar. Like, what are you doing with that suit on? What's the occasion? The gruff voice makes me jump. Oh, it's, it's a gruff voice. But I've already settled on a voice for him, so I guess I have to keep it. Standing and turning back to the stall. I see the girl is gone. She's gone again? Where is she popping away to? In her place is an older gentleman. Um, hello. Yes, this will be the one, please. I'd like to thank the girl who works here for her suggestion. As he pockets my coins, he scrunches his bearded face into a puzzled expression. Be begging your pardon, lad. What girl? Wait, wait, didn't he just see her or something? Oh, I need to find out who that girl is. She was right here just a moment ago. Oh, and then I guess the stall disappeared. I gaze across the pool of market goers, and while I don't see the girl's hat bobbing amongst them, I do spot a few recognizable faces. A golden blonde with oval glasses stands out in the crowd. I believe it to be my childhood teacher, although she doesn't look a day older than I remember. The cheesemonger, on the other hand, is just as old as I remember. His grizzled hands are barely strong enough to cut the wheel, and his eyebrows are so long I can't even fathom how he sees. Well, that was just like the guy that we just saw. Then there is the withered boy hawking newspapers out of a woven basket. He has grown from a tiny young one into a sickly looking boy. Poor lad, someone should check him out. I'm hesitant to approach any of these folk from years past. Who's to say they don't know who I am anymore? I dare say I hardly know myself. Then I see a young woman, arms piled high with groceries, cloth and assorted sun dries, moving through the crowd with a purpose. Her arms tremble under the weight. Instinctively, I reach out to catch a sack of flour before it hits the ground. Ah, I'm so sorry. Not a problem, wouldn't want you to lose that. That was one of the girls we saw on the uh, the title screen. The same goes with the flapper. Oh, maybe this girl is important. The teetering stack is stable again, for now. She manages to produce a smiling frown, ripe with humor, dismay, and impatience. Thanks, I usually have help on market day, but my sisters decided to make themselves scarce today. I am struck by the freckles unevenly distributed along her cheekbones. The dark green blouse she wears makes her red hair glow like the rising sun. Yeah, that red hair is the true definition of a redhead. She's grown, but her voice is unchanged. It's certainly her. It has to be. Marion? Marion McLeod? As soon as the question leaves my mouth, I fear I may have made her uncomfortable and surprised. Perhaps she does not recognize me. Noticing her inability to shake hands due to the overabundance of packages, I squirm, shake my head, and start to apologize. 
Wow, what? she's holding the stack of flowers on her one arm. Like, wow, she has immense strength. She straightens up, adjusts her goods, looks me dead in the eye, and extends one hand. I, I'm Marion. Her handshake is firm. She squints at me, perhaps because of the bright sun. Then her face breaks into a smile. Malcolm? She sighs with relief. You're home. The wind blows across the familiar face, no longer that of the girl I knew through childhood, but of the woman she's become. She steps towards me, as if to offer an embrace, but is too bogged down with groceries to do anything, but stares at me wide-eyed. So, Maria McLeod is our childhood friend, eh? Hmm, so I wonder what's gonna be going on with her. She was one of the characters seen in the title screen, so who was the other one? Maybe another one of her sisters? Her visage is warm and youthful, but her eyes have a maturity beyond their years. Back and still in one piece, thankfully. How are you? Your sisters? Grace and Jessie? We're still all managing to make ends meet on the homestead. We're still neighbours then. And your parents? I catch myself. Uh, your father? Oh, so she doesn't have a mother. She only has a father. Okay. Her mother passed when the girls were young. Oh, tragic. I should have remembered before I spoke. Father is still away. He's overseas serving as an officer. Oh, just like me, perhaps. We're still tending the place ourselves. Your hands must be quite full with that. She laughs and shifts her weight again, obviously still struggling under the load. Hmm? In more ways than one. I had better get back to my errands before I drop anything else. It's so wonderful to see you again, Malcolm. Please stop by our house anytime. All of us can catch up. It's been too long. She nods a farewell and turns back towards the fray of the market. Oh, come back here, Miriam. I want to spend some more time with you. Oh, we got another choice. Uh, get on with today's errands or offer to help her with her things. I would offer to help her with her things. We, we just got the hat, so I guess that was the groceries for the day. So why not help out a childhood friend? Let's offer to help. Seeing an old friend wrestling with all of those unyieldy supplies breaks my heart. Say, Miriam, do you want an extra set of hands for the day? She turns back around, perhaps caught genuinely surprised by the offer. I hope I'm not embarrassing myself or her. I have time to help you with your shopping, if you need, seeing as your sisters aren't around to help you. Really? That's very generous of you. I mean, if you're sure you're not in a rush or needed anywhere else. Of course, it's what good neighbours do. Well then, yes thank you. It would help tremendously. Oh, so we're going to help Marion get her supplies home. Oh, what is this soundtrack going on here? Some more piano chords and some like twinkly rhythm as well. Oh, this piece of music sounds very relaxing too. Once her goods are evenly distributed between us, we set off. We start at the Cheesemonger, where Marion fills a sack with Bonchester wheels, Diviodale witches, and crowdy curds. He hands us a large sample of fresh double cream kabok on warm oat cakes, much to my delight. The salty and sweet flavours burst in my mouth. Tasty? A few crumbs fall from my lips as I nod, and she laughs. It's been quite a few years since I've had anything that good. Just wait till you fry Flora's jam biscuits. Come on! Marion takes hold of my arm and guides me to meet Flora, the local baker. While I oogle the bread and pastries at the market stall, Marion coaxes a few samples for us. Flora hands us some sugared biscuits. Oh, I love sugared biscuits. The sweetness of them, oh, they are delectable. I take a bite and they are indeed heavenly. I do all the bacon at home, but the jam biscuits I get here are so delicious. They just melt in your mouth. Oh, so good. I smile, barely able to contain the pleasure. It's been ages since I've had sweet treats like this. Now I'm going to take you to the tailor. To let my pants out? Am I already fattening up? No, silly. To add pockets to your coat and pants. To fill them to the brim with biscuits and treats. Ah, so you are trying to beef me up a bit, eh? No, no, I just see how much you like to eat. Food makes your eyes light up. You learn to appreciate even the simplest of experiences once they're taken from you from any length of time. Yeah, from the war, of course. So I guess Malcolm is really trying to savor everything that he's missed on that time. The crispiness of a cracker, the sourness of a fresh cheese. I understand. 
father sent a can of peaches home by post last autumn. Opening it was a sheer delight for me and my sisters. Eating them together, we felt almost like a whole family again. The smallest moments form the biggest memories. Oh, that, that's a hard-hitting line. Wow, well done, Malcolm. I congratulate you there on your thoughtfulness there. She still smiles, but I can tell she is getting a bit choked up about it. I motion towards the tailor's stall. As it happens, I would prefer a wardrobe that doesn't smell like Grandad's closet. Care to pick something out for me? Sure, let's get you something from the 20th century. Of course this game would be set in the 20th century because it's set during one of the world wars. Mariam and I end up finding a simple but smart ensemble for me. It fits well enough for something not made to measure and a light cotton shirt protects me from the scratchy wool coat. After that, we leisurely pursue up and down the vendor carts. I try to remember to get what I came for as well. Yeah, remember, you've got a mission, Malcolm. Building supplies, barn tools, a few things for the pantry, and of course, a healthy supply of treats for Hazel. Yeah, otherwise she's just gonna be grumpy again that I just broke her promise. After a quick stop at the clobberer, where Marion picks up a few pairs of repaired boots, we at last stop beside her horse along the edge of town. As she loads up the saddlebags, she looks at me laughing. You know, I don't think I've seen anyone our age so excited to go to the market. I find it so mundane most days. Huh? I'm actually surprised at myself too. I reflect back on a morning of mirth and relaxation. Two emotions I've not experienced in some time. Happy to help any time. I'll take the new routine over the old one any day. Old sights. Yes, old sights. But I can handle that. Ah, oh, so is that the end of our time with Miriam? Oh, I really enjoyed that. The sun is high and the market is finally winding down. Miriam finishes securing her supplies precariously to her horse. Other people are doing the same, about to set off for their long treks home. And then there are the handful of people drifting into the stag and nanny to top off the tank before their journey. What are they? Are they riding their horses drunk? Oh, Miriam's still with us. Well, Malcolm, I think that will do it. I really do appreciate all the help. Where are you headed to now? Oh, we've got another choice to make here, and there's three this time. And why is there a butterfly there? Why is that? What does that mean? Oh, I best be getting home to Gran. I think I might stop by the pub. Or did you have anywhere else in mind? We've got a duty to do with Hazel by bringing her back to Gran's stable. But we could stop by the pub because that's where everyone else is going. And somewhere else? Do we go with Miriam somewhere? Maybe we'll go to her house or somewhere else in town? Uh, I think I might put off going back to Gran for now. Uh, I could stop by the pub, but maybe I would want to spend more time with Miriam. Let's go go somewhere else in mind. Oh, uh, I suppose I don't have any plans in particular. Why? Really? Well then, perhaps you'd like to stop by the homestead. Yeah, we can go to Miriam's house. Maybe we can meet their sisters. Catch up for old time's sake. Sure, I can tag along. Here, we can even load some of your supplies onto my cart. Oh, but Hazel's not gonna like that, the extra weight. Miriam's poor overloaded horse is notably eased when we remove some of the gear. Oh, fuck yeah, I knew it. Hazel on the other hoof seems mightily perturbed by the extra weight. Oh, cheer up, girl. We're going someplace pleasant. To make it up to her, I dig around for some of the treats I have gotten her. Yeah, maybe she'll finally get a smile. I hold up a sack of carrots to Hazel's nose. Or oh, sniff the good treats, girl. How's this for a reward for a hard day's work? Yay! She got it! She sniffs at the bag and whinnies. I take a carrot out and she pulls it from my hand greedily. So it seems my mare is not above bribery. Progress! We finish loading the reluctant steed up and Marion and I set off down the road together. Oh, so are we going to Marion's house now? I rock back and forth with the steady trot of my horse. The hum of bees and whistles of songbirds fill the air. Everything is so peaceful. Peace. I'd almost forgotten its simple pleasures. Glancing over at Miriam who rides beside me, I'm overcome with relief to be safe and welcomed back. Oh, look at that art! Wow! Why does her horse look very different to Hazel? Because that one has like black beaded eyes. Mine has blue bright eyes like a human. She catches my eye and smiles. How does it feel to be home? I don't know. I've definitely not been home long enough to let the feelings sink in. 
I understand. It's all right if you'd rather not talk about it. Understand? I'm having a hard time getting a handle on my feelings myself. I wonder how much I should share. How much I can share. Oh, 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 we got another major decision here. I'm gonna assume that that butterfly means like importance to the story. Open up to her or leave it be. Express your feelings, Malcolm. Do not let the trauma of the war get to you. So just open up to her, be emotional. Time and events have brought us together here and I find myself wanting to open up to her. Truth be told, a lot of things seem tremendously difficult. The farm, the town, everything has kept going on without me, and so much has changed. What about the people? Some. You certainly changed. Oh, really? How? You look like, a uh, an adult now. Well, obviously, she's grown up, you dummy! Older? Wiser? I realize that may not have been an appropriate way to express that she's gone from a young woman to a, well... I certainly couldn't say blooming lass out loud. Oh my gosh, Malcolm, you have a dirty mind already. <laughs> I guess we're both adults now. Childhood certainly passed us by. There's something wistful in her expression. I feel nearly the same. I don't ever remember the luxury of being a child, though I'd like to think I'm a bit more grown up than the last you saw me. Time will do that. Milking cows and grinding chaff will also do that. My cheeks go red. Oh, I... I don't mean to say you look old. Her smirk is reassuring. I know. Sometimes I just like to feel a little out of place. Like the whole world has moved on. Disappeared. And here I am. Trapped doing chores until eternity. Oh, that is a, that is a big mood. Uh, I feel so relatable, Miriam. Constantly putting YouTube videos out on a consistent basis. It's, it can be a bit tedious, but it's enjoyable. Oh, listen to me. I don't mean to sound ungrateful. I'm happy to have a safe and warm home. But the day-to-day -day drudgery? Yes, I see Jessie out having a grand time, and I look at poor Grace, who never seems to even want that excitement. Well, what do you want? She shakes her head. I don't know. I guess... Just once I'd like to forego my chores to go to the pub and have a pint. Well, surely you're old enough, Miriam. You certainly look like it. You couldn't? I just can't. There are so many responsibilities with father away. I would feel endless amounts of guilt if I let things fall behind. Ah, that isn't a way to live, Miriam. Even a hard-working woman must afford herself some frivolously now and then. Maybe one of these days, when the farm learns to run itself, then maybe you can guide me on how to live a more daring life. Yes, I had gone off in search of the daring life, and found it alright. Perhaps. Be careful what you wish for. Oh, that line at the end, it really signifies the importance of this kind of life I'm reaching. Oh, oh, so we're now at the homestead. Is this like a best place to leave off this part, Fluffbutts? I definitely think it is because I think we may be meeting the sisters in this next part. So I think we shall save it right here. Chapter one to six. Oh, so we've really progressed on here. And I think that settles it for part one of Changeling Tale, Fluffbutts. I am really enjoying this visual novel way more than the other one that I did many years ago. The emotionally driven story, the backdrop of the war affecting Malcolm's character, the many different girls that we've met, and the settings as well. I am loving the story so far, so I hope one day that I can do a part two, but we shall see. So, Fluffbutts, don't forget to hoof smash that like button down below, and comment your thoughts as well on what you thought of Changeling Tale as well, and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this coming soon. And also, don't forget to leave a pledge on my Patreon page down in the description below, so you can help support me in making these fantastic videos more consistently. And I shall see you all very soon. Goodbye! And just before this video ends, I want to give a huge thank you to all my patrons on my Patreon. My Silver Fluffbutt patrons, Sabrina Wade and Alex Smith, and all my Gold Fluffbutt patrons, Jack Leichter, Drew Lazinski, Clear Heart Apple, Owen Wildish, Jonathan Chapa, Darth Siler 22 and Kiki Bat VA. All of your love and support is greatly appreciated. Thank you.